Morning, everyone. Uh, let's begin now. Heavenly Parent, Holy Community, Oceania Hundake with Reverend Yutaku Yamada on this day, the Sunday, 7th of March, 2021, or the 24th day of January, the ninth year of Chongil Guk. So let's uh, begin by offering a bow to our Heavenly Parents and True Parents. Carry up. Kyombe. And we'll recite our family pledge both in Korean and English. Thank you. And uh, family pledge number eight. Our family, the owner of Chongil Guk, pledges having entered the era of Chongil Guk to achieve the ideal of God and human beings united in love through absolute faith, absolute love, and absolute obedience and to perfect the realm of liberation and complete freedom in the kingdom of God on earth and in heaven by centering on true love. Thank you. Uh, let's see. We can uh, uh, ask uh, Reverend Lim if we could offer the opening prayer. Are you there, Suntech? Can you? Uh, good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Please, Please join, join me in prayer. prayer. Our most beloved heavenly parent, true parents of heaven, earth, and humankind. Today, 7th of uh, March 2021, we begin a new day and uh, begin. A new day with your words and uh, we sincerely want to connect with our true parents to mother on earth and true father in the spirit world and to go forward together in this time towards 2027 20, these seven years of a golden time, golden years for our true mother here on earth, as well as all blessed families. And true mother encourages us to fulfill our portion of responsibilities every time. And we sincerely pray that we could respond to true mother's calling encouragement every time and in our life there are things that we could uh, do and uh, support especially as a family as a couple we want to create an environment for Chanyugu, environment for our children environment for our community especially our next generation Hemi parent we sincerely pray that to our efforts our efforts on this earth and we could uh, at the moment unite together with the two mother and uh, especially two mother's hope is to unify Korea and we love uh, Korea and we want to take action together 
to help to unify Korea by 2022. 20, uh, that is our two mothers hope and that is also our two fathers hope when he was on the earth. And that is your hope to unify this fatherland and this land that you have prepared for thousands of years to send the only begotten son and only begotten daughter. And, uh, and uh, we, we want, want to, to play, play a small part, part of our, 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 our life, life to, work to work with the true mother and, and to, make to make all this dream come, come true. true. When, when we, we put, put in our, our mind, our heart, heart and, and, and work, work every day, day it, it will come to fruition, fruition and, and it will come to power. When, when we all unite together, together it will, will become, become a, a reality, reality someday. someday. Have you prepared to prepare? Also, also to find a nation, a nation in the world, world where, where people, people can respond, respond to, to parents. parents. And, and in each region, region, in the region of Oceania, and, and in Australia, Australia you, have you have prepared the way. That's, that's why. why to father proclaim unified, unified world begins from Oceania. And to mother proclaim this era of the Pacific, Pacific dream era. era. And, and we, we, as an Oceania region, Oceanic region, realm, can, can uh, contribute, contribute greatly to this civilization, civilization and, and realize this uh, two parents the dream at this time. time. We, we offer our gratitude, gratitude this morning as, as a blessed family for, for our children's uh, love, support, and, and the blessing they gave, they gave us. us. And, and begin this Sunday, Sunday new, week, new week, with a fresh, fresh mind, mind, and that, that you, you want to work with us in our lives. lives. Thank, Thank you. you. I sincerely pray, pray and report all this in our name, Suntek and Nikam. Bless and thank you. Aju. Thank you, Suntek. Greetings, everyone. Uh, we have you know, 44 people connected. Uh, just to point out, uh, sometimes people say they can't see everyone. Uh, when I when I spotlight somebody, I sort of take over what you see. But when uh, when it's like this, uh, you you up on your top right, there's a view. You can either change it to speaker view or gallery view. And if you have it on gallery view, then you can see everyone. Because <laughs> uh, someone some people are asking me, I only just see uh, those people, but you, you, you can control it sometimes. Yeah, so you can get gallery view. All right, so welcome everyone from around our uh, region of Oceania. So let's give a warm welcome to Reverend Yutaka Yamada as he offers us. Good morning, everyone. Can you see the screen? Yes. Okay, good morning everyone and brothers and sisters. Morning. Thank you for joining this morning Hundoke. And today is also the Sunday. Yet we can have a great day together with our heavenly parents and true parents and also the God's word and prayer and Johnson. So let's really do our best and a great time. Uh, yesterday, uh, we are talking and sharing about the severe situation of Korean people under the Japanese occupation and also the World War 
two. So during that time, uh, Korean people, our, we know the Korean tradition, they really respect our uh, their ancestors and the uh, family tree and uh, this tradition. But in that tradition, uh, they lose the language and also they lose their name and they lose their tradition. I think sound is sound. It's okay. So under the Japanese occupation, they force them to change the name and to ask them not to use the Korean language, to use the Japanese. And some there is also the things to uh, deny the ancestor or family things or tradition. So that was the serious matter at that time. So yesterday also I pray about that. And one thing I also I realize and I feel how about the painfulness of the losing name, losing also word, and losing the uh, family tree. But in the same, same time, then how about our uh, heavenly parents or God? God, does God has God's family tree or not? Or God's lineage or not? Or God's family or God's name? or God's language or not. So actually, God, heavenly parents themselves, they lost the language, they lost the lineage, they lost, heavenly parents lost the family tree itself. That's why during our providential history, nearly God, and we have to, we have to restore really God's family tree and God's name, God's lineage and God's language. So when we read the, those contents, of course, Korean history, Korean people are facing or had a painful experience that moment, but not only their experience. If we connect with God's painful heart, he got himself lost the family tree language, family, lineage, everything. That's why now centering on or together with our three parents, we have to establish again, newly connect again with God's lineage, God's family, and create God's family tree for the future and together with God's language. So yesterday also I felt there those things to think about uh, this losing language or spirit or those contents. And also there were two times World War II in the history. Just two times we had the World War, World War. But how about our father and mother? When father was born, there was World War I. When mother was born, there was World War II. So those things is really not coincident in that moment all nation and the world totally involved under the battle between God's side and Satan's side, how begotten son, begotten daughter could be born in the era in the Korean Peninsula. That's why all the world, all, world, all people actually were involved in the beginning of birth of our true father and true mother. So we could recognize and realize several things. So today, based on those matter, let's continue the next subtitle. So let me read. Christianity and the only begotten daughter. From the moment of the fall, God worked his providence to send his beloved only begotten son and daughter to humankind. After many foundations were laid, some bearing fruit, others claimed by Satan, his plan developed dramatically in Korea. From the early 90s, spiritual fire flared up among Pentecostal Korean Christians who received guidance about God's providence. Many groups believed that the returning Lord 
would appear in Pyongyang. So after Jesus went to the cross, God continuously prepared the foundation by Christ the Christianity to send the Messiah on this earth. When we see the history and when we see the history of Korea, finally there is a sign was appeared and many people in Pyongyang in the time received the revelation from God. Now the returning Lord would appear. So many of them receive those kind of inspiration or revelation. So we, let's see again. Can you recognize where is where the Pyongyang is? Pyongyang is this place. Seoul is here and Pyongyang. So Pyongyang that time, people say Pyongyang is the Eastern Jerusalem. So people are thinking this place kind of the feeling is same feeling or some holy city in the eastern area, kind of the uh, eastern, eastern Jerusalem. That much many spiritual inspiration, Christianity was so developed, inspired, and the spiritual atmosphere, Holy Spirit were full of Holy Spirit that time. That much Pyongyang was really, really prepared city, and the many people were also prepared, and they are preparing for welcoming the second coming at that, at that moment. So this is Chonju, is father's homeland, Anju is mother's homeland, hometown, and Pyongyang and Seoul. So we can see that's, that the location, you can see this is North Korean area now. Exemplary among these was particular lineal succession of churches. The New Jesus Church led by Reverend E. Yondo, the Holy Lord Church led by Reverend Kim Son Do, and the inside the Um Church, so named to emphasize that the returning Lord would be born of a woman, led by Reverend Ho Ho Bin. All three overcame oppression on one side from the non-Christian government and on the other from the mainstream denominations. Amid such pleasures, these churches completed the Christian foundation to receive the only begotten son and only begotten daughter. So they are actually the central group of the spiritual Christianity, but they receive many kind of oppose and the pleasure from even not only from government, even the main main Christian main Christian group also oppose them. That much they are facing the challenging situation. The Eastern Korean Peninsula, upon which the sun first rises, is a region of mountains, and the Western Peninsula, where the sun sets is a legion of valleys. Following the principle of geomancy, spiritual works led by men unfolded in the mountains of the east at Wonsan in Hamyang province, and spiritual works led by women unfolded in the valleys of the west at Cholsan in Pyongan province. Representative among such women were Kim Son Do of the Holy Church and Ho Ho Bin of the inside the Um Church, representative among the men who ignited spiritual works, were evangelist Fan Guk Ju, Reverend Pek Nam Ju, and Reverend Yi Yeon Do of the New Jesus Church. So there is a male side and female side. So I will show the graph again. So you can see. So west side and east side, men and the women. So west side, women, holy church, Kim Son Do, inside the Um church, Ho Ho Bin. So this peop, these two people is the central figure or main person in the spiritual group of woman side. And the male side, eastern side, New Jesus Church, Pek Nam Ju, 
and New Jesus Church E Yondo. So anyway, those names continuously coming and coming. Of course, some it's not easy to remember the name and their confusing name. But this key person's name every time appear. Also, please uh, try to rem remember those names. So Kim Son Do Ho Ho Bin. This is their key person. And Pek Nam Ju and Lee Yeon Do is male side and women side. My mother grew up in the mainstream Presbyterian church, but my grandmother connected to various spirit-led groups and when the time was right, introduced her spiritual life to my mother. Long before Korean's revelation in 1945, my grandmother and mother both offered fervent devotions, lived a life of self-sacrifice, and served others with perseverance, with their soul, focus being on receiving the Lord at his second, at his second advent. So Temonim, the true mother's mother, Honsune Temonim, actually, uh, she was connected to the Christian church, Presbyterian church, some uh, mainstream of church, but because of the receiving influence or guidance of grandmother, Cho Womo grandmother, Temonim started to connect to the spiritual group of a Christianity, and they really offer the sincere devotion to welcome the second advent. So last chapter, we studied, we learned about the Temonim's life. Really, Temonim's life is serious and challenging, and we can see her sincere or serious determination and devotion. So in the, this chapter, we can see how Temonim also started to connect with the spiritual a central group of Christianity. In those days, Fang Gukchu with some 50 followers set out from Qingdao, northeast China on a pilgrimage across the Korean Peninsula. They witnessed to their faith, ate nothing but flour mixed with water, and perform performed miracles and revival meetings. The Holy Spirit often came to the evangelist sister, Fan Unja, she as well as Reverend Yi Yondo, a local pastor, whom she had met at one of their revivals. Deeply impressed my mother, who joined their pilgrimage. So this place, uh, Temonim started to many activities together with those person. So anyway, many name is continuously coming. So when we see the uh, history, and when we see the age, and when we see the place, so you can see the several person's name every time, right? Yi Yondo, Ho Ho Bin, Kim Son Do. So those person actually are important person. So when we learn or when we read this, these contents, if you can, please describe or imagine, so which year? Temonim, grandmother, Chowomo grandmother, or mother, or which year and where they met them. Iyondo, Kim Sondo, or Ho Ho Bin, around which area, 1930, 1935, there is around the Pyongyang area, or Anju area, you can imagine, right? And if we can imagine the person and place and years, then later you can be you can recognize everything will be connected with true father. True father also had a meeting with them in several places or several ages. That's why now we are study or we are seeing the mother's history together with the monument mother. And we can compare with true father's life actually everything will be connected. That's why later, really, if you can find interconnected connect things, really interesting and also the uh, exciting. 
So anyway, that time, that moment, they could not have really, or they could not have the food, could not have to eat the food. That's why they are suffering life. And what did they eat? Only flour with water. So can you imagine those kind of food? Then we can really experience, we can feel that. I see today the Sydney Youth Group is joining, right? So through experience those food, maybe you can feel how they had experience. Maybe only flour with mixing with water. You wanna try to eat those food? So anyway, that time, really many spiritual group or Christian group or even Korean people's life was really serious or severe life. There are no food, just flour with mixed water, mixed water with water. But the spiritual group, Holy Spirit always come to them. They are even not so much food, but they are so much inspired and they are with full of Holy Spirit. So they are revived so much. Mother walked with them on their witnessing journey from Anju all the way to Shinuiju near the border with China. They preached God's word as they went. Politically speaking, it was a fearful age for anyone who so much as alluded to the existence of the Korean people could be arrested by the Japanese police. But the group's service was so powerful that even police detectives said to spy on the meetings would be deeply moved. So that time, if they are speaking in Korean language, or if they are doing some activity, they might have, they might, they could be arrested by the Japanese police. So it's that kind of not easy environment, but how about their life? Continuously, they preach and they tell them and they give the message, now second coming is come on this earth. We have to prepare, we have to welcome. How much this is a great time. They continuously share the message, deliver the message, deliver the gospel to the people deliver this liberation to the people do you have to prepare we have to prepare about the second coming so because of that all of them were so much inspired and full of holy spirit how much passionate because this content was great atmosphere was great that's why even spy were touched so much and moved their heart that much dearly the great atmosphere was there. That's why this Holy Spirit, those things is not by knowledge, not my theory. This is because of Holy Spirit passionate Chan Song, and people could feel the grace of Holy Spirit, happiness, peaceful heart, and conviction all the time. So talking about God's will, God's vision, and dream, then they could feel those experience. I'm, I'm sure some of you had those kind of Holy Spirit experience in your life, right? And really, if we are, as the pastor or leader, if we could reach that kind of standard, this is really great things. If you say one word, already Holy Spirit is up here, all people receive the happiness, peaceful heart, warm heart, conviction, dream. So those spiritual atmosphere were very excited that moment and happened at that, at that moment. The witnessing journey was not a pleasure trip. It was a course filled with hardships. They had nothing but the clothes on their backs and the residents of the village were just as destitute. Nonetheless, these believers walked as many as 40 kilometers every day and night and lit the fire of the Holy Spirit in every village they visited. My mother made the journey through Shiniju and on the 
Kange arrive, arriving there on the 100th day of their pilgrimage at that point, the witnessing team sought to cross the border with China into Manchuria, but this proved to be impossible and they returned, returned home. So I prepared one video, this one minute video, so how Temonim was going around pilgrimage and several place. So we can see that short video, one minute video together with uh, this uh, old contents. So let's see the one minute video. So can you please imagine how Temonim was spending for witnessing together with the spiritual group to prepare, welcome our second coming. Mrs. Moon received great influence from her mother, Mrs. Hong. Mrs. Hong was born in 1914 at Zhongzhu, which is the same birthplace as Reverend Moon. Mrs. Hong's faith was so strong that she went out and street witnessed in the crossroad between Anju, Huachan, and Gange at a time when the Japanese occupiers were persecuting Christian believers. Mrs. Hong would say, the Lord does not come upon clouds, but comes wearing physical body. Instead of being shackled by literal interpretation of the Bible, she listened to spiritual revelations and words of truth from heaven. Her mother and the grandmother from the mother's side placed their greatest efforts in preparation in a spiritual church for the coming of the Messiah. Okay, thank you. So this is the map at the moment. Chonju and Anju and Kange. So from Anju going to Hichon and Kange. So this distance is around 100 miles, is um, around 160 kilometers. So they went there by walking and witnessed, witnessing village by village. And they tried to enter to the China this is China and China border, but they couldn't go. So go to Kange and came back to Anju. So this is a place where mother went. So that's why um, the meeting, um, that's why the how about the meaning of a meeting Messiah and meeting the true parents these things actually is that simple things or not there is god's plan in the beginning together with adam and eve but because that was not happened because of human fall that's why all providence is going and extended as the restoration history so foreign history so god tried to send to the begotten son and daughters Jesus came on this earth, but couldn't fulfill. That's why extend again. And finally, now second coming, we got the son, we got the daughter and true parents. So when we see the history of the providential history, we can see how God prepared from the beginning until the end. So when we see about divine principle, we can see the God's history. If we describe one sentence, one word of principle of creation, human fall, and principle of restoration, actually we can dis de describe simple sentence. Maybe I explained before. So principle of creation, what's the purpose? Actually, God wanted to have one couple with God's lineage. What is the human fall? God lost one couple with God's lineage. Then what is the purpose of the restoration of history? God want to send again one couple with God's lineage. That's why now also in the Chonicu era, God wants to expand the couple with God's lineage. Now we are thinking easily about blessing. Looks like we are easy to receive blessing now. But how about in the history? Many Christianity, they really offer the life, risk of their life. Then they try to meet the Messiah. They try to meet the second coming. 
even they face the no food, they offer life, they face the risk of life, they try to find the Messiah, they try to find the second coming. That much serious history was there. Through those foundations in Chonson, finally we got the son, we got the daughter, and two parents come here and we could meet them. And those things is actually really in order to fulfill God's plan and God's wishes. So today uh, we are we led together about the Temonim or Ari uh, spiritual groups history or their activity or their background. So in the era of the Choniku, current era, we could meet two parents already. We could receive blessing anytime. So if we can remind again how much our this moment our meeting with two parents, our life in this, this era is precious and our blessing is precious. If we can be mind again, imagine that, then we can feel how grateful and how meaningful we are. So today is Sunday and today is also starting day of the new week. Let's have a great heart and a happy heart Let's return the greatness to our happy parents and true parents. So thank you for joining today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Reverend Nisaka. Thank you. Uh, all right. Yes, so uh, a couple of things came to my mind. Uh, the first thing I was thinking, uh, flour and water, I thought, oh, well, I hope they cook it uh, because they eat it not cooked. It's not going to be very good. Uh, but the, the thing that uh, touched me was, you know, thinking about the Holy Spirit. Uh, I, I've, you know, counted the, the Holy Spirit, you know, uh, being born uh, Greek Orthodox and then having like uh, a born again experience, uh, uh, then feeling the uh, the Holy Spirit just come and overwhelm and really, and then, you know, joining our movement and then having uh, that same Holy Spirit feeling, but 10 times more intense uh, and really confirming, you know, this is where uh, uh, you know, God really is. And then, then I was reflecting on, oh, I wonder, your know, mother is the, the substantial embodiment of the Holy Spirit. And then she's in the, the spirit filled churches and the Holy Spirit is moving. And I'm, I'm thinking, I wonder when uh, the encounter of the Holy Spirit with Mother as the Holy Spirit happened. I mean, we, we know at, uh, at 16 with True Father, we, we see that painting of Jesus and uh, projecting himself uh, onto uh, Father. And then there's an exchange of spirit and, and the oneness happening. And I was, I was thinking in all this time, you know, the, the, the power of the Holy Spirit and and when they engaged with each other, I mean, uh, uh, it must have been an amazing uh, experience on, on both sides. I mean, like Jesus meeting, I often thought, you know, we all we see the, the picture of Jesus looking at Father and, and Father receiving Jesus and, the, and people have experience to, uh, uh, you know, receiving Christ. But I, I also wondered how, uh, Jesus received Father at that time, and, and the same with the Holy Spirit. I wonder how how the, the Holy Spirit received Mother, because they represent the fulfilment of their their roles, because they go on to become true parents. So I, I you know, the the intensity of of the Spirit would be very overwhelming. So I was just reminded of. Uh, those experiences. So I'd like to open it up. Who would like to uh, uh, share? Yes. Yes. I'm missing anyone there. Who are... Oh, yeah, Chris, go ahead. I see your hand. Nobody there to talk. Look, I'd just like to uh, 
Thank you both, Reverend Yamada and yourself, John, just for those insights, that reminder about what people offered without actually receiving the Messiah, just incredible uh, reminder to, you know, revere those people and their offering. And many Christians the same, right? That uh, led in exemplary lives. So uh, also your insight, John, about, I've never really thought about that Jesus was actually exchanging his spirit and uniting um, as a returning spirit to Father and watching that picture. So thank you both for that. Thank you, Chris. Yes, uh, Jeff, go ahead. Yeah, when I was uh, young, <clears throat> a long time ago now, growing up in the 60s and 70s, there was a lot of like young people searching in New Zealand and in groups, like communes, you might say, some of them and uh, reading all sorts of spiritual books and doing yoga and different things. And um, one of those groups was um, the group that joined our church. Uh, as a young sister at that time, uh, Lindsay Irving, who met Segrin. So Lindsay was in a church praying, a uh, Presbyterian church, and, uh, and Segrin came and saw her uh, crying. And so they made a friendship. And so that whole group that Lindsay was connected to, Grant Bracefield, his, his brother Robin, and all the early members, uh, they all joined. About seven or eight of them, they just all joined and moved into the little flat that she had just in a period of days or weeks. Uh, just uh, one really prepared group was like the foundation of New Zealand. Um, they were very extraordinary people. Grant was an exceptional person. He could have been an all black. Uh, really smart student in uh, Wellington University, and uh, they were like all university students, I think, most of them anyway. So, um, yeah, so, um, yeah, so anyway, God's been preparing people, and um, just amazing, though, to hear. Uh, so I can really relate, you know, to um, to those groups in Korea, just how much God prepared them and, and educated them to meet uh, and uh, make the foundation for our uh, two parents in Korea. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, anyone else like to share? Yeah, yeah, Kenji, go ahead. Uh, good morning, uh, Reverend Yutaka and uh, all brothers and sisters of Oceania. Uh, yes, uh, thank you very much for the um, uh, all the uh, um, preparation that the um, uh, Reverend Yutaka uh, made and uh, also the old comments from the elder uh, brothers and sisters are uh, really stimulating. Anyhow, yeah, I just really felt that uh, the how the God prepared the uh, chosen people uh, Putting, by putting the uh, very difficult situation, but uh, because of that, the people's their face uh, really um, um, a, a lifted up, and uh, um, with uh, in any circumstance, they uh, pursue the uh, um, the uh, the uh, passion to meet the um, uh, Messiah, the Lord of Second Advent, and um, uh, I think the um, uh, God prepared those circumstances um, in the uh, uh, any countries as well. And uh, I just uh, heard the, uh, some story uh, in Japan that um, anyway, Japanese uh, act act actually as many cases in our movement they described as the uh, occupier <laughs> um, and uh, to the uh, Korean people, but uh, uh, around that time, also the Japan, uh, I think, got prepared many spiritual group and uh, many religions. The um, um, the um, grown up uh, in the uh, um, nineteen early uh, early twentieth uh, centuries, and um, some religions such as the um, uh, um, Tenrikyo. Uh, uh, founded by the uh, Nakayama Miki, uh, Miki Nakayama, is a really uh, uh, John the Baptist figure, um, female figure, uh, revealing the um, 
uh, God of the uh, parents, um, the concept of the uh, father and mother, something like that. Anyway, um, yeah, uh, really uh, um, stimulated by the uh, uh, history, uh, such as the true mother, uh, history that true mother revealed in details uh, in those days in Korea. And, um, and also the uh, Jeffrey's the uh, uh, testimony. Uh, and uh, I really would like to find the, uh, such group, you know, in nowadays as the God must have the, uh, prepared some group like that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, we have a couple of people raise their hands. Uh, next is uh, Randall, go ahead. Okay. Um, thanks for that. Um, with the Geelong Interfaith that I'm in, um, we've got a couple of different events coming up and um, we've had a, a couple of interfaith um, panels for, on Zoom to talk about different things. The next one is going to be service and sacrifice. And that goes so well with uh, what we've been hearing today, the um, different type of efforts that uh, people have gone through to you know, really uh, make breakthroughs. Um, in the spiritual and religious lifestyle uh, to get the providence moving along. So, um, and the the attitude when um, you have these things as well. I mean, um, you know, is there a way to escape the sacrifice that you have to do? And uh, it's kind of like, why would I want to? Because, you know, this is, this is the way to achieve it. So it's kind of like... Um, uh, we become indemnity lovers. We, <laughs> um, one friend was saying that, um, you know, I was asking, okay, well, what, what, what's your favorite part of principle? And he said, indemnity. And I was kind of like, what? He says, yeah, he says, with Christians, if they want to do something dramatic, they have to sit around for 2,000 years and wait for something to drop out of the sky, you know, to come from the clouds. But with us, we don't have to wait. We can pay indemnity. And so it's like, um, yeah, this service and sacrifice, we can do it joyfully. And um, the way that true parents, uh, families and their own upbringing, this was, um, uh, they, they didn't shy away from going into the hard course. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Randall. Yes, on tech. Gotcha. Uh, need to unmute. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Um, yeah, thank you, uh, uh, Reverend Yamada and Reverend John, uh, for the uh, service. Um, and uh, I, um, when uh, we read through two mothers' uh, uh, words in a book about Korea, um, yeah, so actually I, um, in the past, uh, when I heard the uh, two fathers talk about Korea history, um, it was hard to imagine all, all the things our uh, father say. And then I heard that our father actually watched a uh, Korean drama about Korean history. And when father watched, like father will watch from morning straight all the way to the evening. So Korean drama sometimes can be like a AT series, like uh, Jumong, Jumong was very famous, um, uh, Korean drama. Um, Jumong was uh, a, a, a story about history, about the um, history of uh, Goguryeo. And Goguryeo is a center on North Korea. And Goguryeo actually dominate uh, this uh, Korean history for quite a long time. And I think two father watched that and even invite the uh, Actor, actors to uh, to Chun Jong Gong. So uh, then I started also uh, watching, and then I start to realize more uh, about Korean people and the culture. And then uh, my friends, um, who is a Japanese uh, minister in Japan, and then I asked him, um, "You he also love Korean drama," and I asked him why many Japanese actually love uh, Korean drama, like to watch. It's not, only, it's not only Japan, throughout the world, a lot of people like Korean drama. 
So I asked him as a Japanese, why do you like Korean drama? And uh, he thought about it and he say, uh, Korean drama really uh, express uh, a deep heart between uh, human beings. Uh, he say, uh, Sim Jong. Say, he say Korean uh, uh, drama show Korean people's uh, Sim Jong. And, and that really is uh, very powerful. And I agree with that. And when I watch uh, Korean drama, um, I uh, really moved by the uh, Sim Jong. And I think Korean people um, have that kind of a deeper Sim Jong, um, which uh, you, you need to find out yourself. It's hard to just uh, hear, but when you like uh, watch that, then uh, you can feel and experience, when you experience that, you can feel. So I, I think um, uh, now in a world, um, not only not only drama but also you go to uh, uh, K-pop all that. Uh, I think behind has a reason, and uh, and that reason being uh, uh, the Korean people's uh, simjong is uh, very interesting, and um, also to that uh, you can learn history, and I think uh, God prepare um, um, Korean as a nation to welcome uh, father and mother in uh, North Korea. So North Korea is a very holy land, is a holy land. That's why Satan uh, took it um, uh, now, but North Korea is a holy land. So I'm uh, always thinking, how can we help uh, North Korea? And uh, before COVID, actually uh, North Korea, um, they opened up uh, uh, their tourism. And uh, because uh, tourism is not sanctioned by, by, by America, so they try to open tourism. So hopefully after COVID, uh, North Korea can more open tourism and uh, we can go to uh, Jongju and uh, Anju uh, soon, someday. Yeah, that is, uh, uh, that is uh, I think, my hope and our, our hope to be able to visit uh, that holy, holy place of our true parents. Thank you. Thank you, Suntek. Uh... I'd like to ask uh, one of the P uh, second gen who are here at the Peace Embassy, uh, I can see them on if they want to uh, share something, because uh, I also noticed they put a thumbs up. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Young men. Sorry, I was trying to think of something to say. I don't have too much to say. It was just, yeah, these 100 Ks have been really inspiring and nice. Um, and I've been taking my notes. Um, and for me, I it was kind of like, I didn't really realize why the Inside the Womb Church was called the Inside the Womb Church. So that made a lot of sense to me. Um, and yeah, it was just interesting how um, people were really prepared. Um, yeah, God really had an idea um, for something to happen in Korea. And um, yeah, it was really um, wowing to see how, how much um, Jung Sung and how much hard work that these spiritual groups put in. And you know, I wish we were as inspired as them. Maybe I have to pray harder. Um, but yes, it was really interesting and, um, yeah, proud of being a true blue Korean. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now, uh, now it's time for us to, uh, offer our, uh, joint prayer. I'll just, uh, share the screen and we can pray together. Okay. Let's begin.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. It's always great to see you and see you tomorrow. Touching. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. God bless. Bye. bye. Thank you. Nara Nata. Have a nice week. Bye bye, Solomon Island. <laughs> <laughs>